All right, ready to dive deep into Proxmox. But maybe you're a little worried about your hard drives, right? Thinking they might wear out a bit too fast, especially if you're using those zippy consumer SSDs. Yeah, it's a common concern, especially with how Proxmox handles disk access. It's a bit different compared to other virtualization platforms. Different how, like more intense. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's always on, always logging. Even if your VMs are just idling, Proxmox is busy writing stuff to the disk. Huh. So that's something to keep in mind. More activity means more wear and tear, right? So what are the main things that cause this extra wear in Proxmox? Well, like we just said, the constant logging is a big one. Proxmox tracks everything, CPU, memory, network traffic, the whole shebang. But there's more to the story. ZFS, for instance. ZFS. That super reliable file system. What's that got to do with it? Well, it's all about those checksums. ZFS uses them to ensure your data stays squeaky clean, no errors. But those checksums need to be written to the disk too, which adds to the overall workload. So it's like a constant double checking process. Makes sense for data integrity, but I could see how that would add up in terms of disk writes. Precisely. And then you've got the choice of file system itself. ZFS, while awesome, tends to be more write intensive than something like ext4 or XFS. Right, so even the file system can affect how much our drives are working. Anything else we should be thinking about? Oh yeah, clustering services. Super helpful for high availability setups, but they can generate a ton of extra disk activity if they're not really needed. Okay, so logging, ZFS, file system choice, and clustering services. Those are our main culprits when it comes to diskware. You got it. Now the question is, how do we choose the right storage? to handle all of this. Yeah, that's the million dollar question. Let's break it down. What are our options? Well, broadly speaking, we've got consumer SSDs, enterprise SSDs, and then the whole idea of dedicating different drives for different purposes. Okay, consumer SSDs, those are the ones we're all familiar with, right? The, the kind you find in your laptop. Yep. And they can be a good starting point, especially for home labs and non-critical stuff, but they usually have lower endurance ratings than those enterprise-grade drives. So, so if running something super important, a consumer SSD might not be the best bet. Exactly. For those mission-critical applications, you'll want the heavy-duty enterprise SSDs. They're built for constant punishment. Gotcha. But for a home lab, let's say, what should I look for when choosing a consumer SSD? Two things. PBW rating and DRAM cache. TBW tells you how much data the drive can handle over its lifetime. Higher is better. So like a mileage reading for cars. The higher the TBW, the longer it'll last. Perfect analogy. And the DRAM cache acts as a buffer, smoothing out those write operations and reducing wear on the SSD. DRAM cache, got it. Any specific consumer SSDs you'd recommend for a Proxmox home lab? The Samsung 970 EVO Plus is a solid choice. Great balance of performance and endurance. Nice, I'll check that out. Now let's talk about those enterprise SSDs. What sets them apart? They're designed from the ground up for constant heavy write operations. They've got those high DWPD ratings, drive writes per day. So they're like the marathon runners of the SSD world. Built for endurance. You nailed it. And they often have extra features like power loss protection, which is crucial for protecting data in case of an outage. That sounds like a must-have for any business, any specific enterprise SSDs you like. The Samsung PM883, Intel DC series, Micron 7300 Pro, all excellent options. Awesome. Okay, we've got consumer SSDs for casual use and enterprise SSDs for the heavy lifting. What about that dedicated drive strategy you mentioned? That's all about separating workloads to optimize performance and minimize wear. Imagine having different lanes on a highway for different types of vehicles, smoother sailing for everyone. You are traffic jams for our data. I like that. Exactly. Ideally, you'd have a dedicated SSD just for your Proxmox operating system. Okay, so that's one drive. What about the virtual machines themselves and all the data they generate? Separate drives for that too. Or maybe a RAID array specifically for VMs and their data keeps things organized and efficient. Smart. And what about those pesky logs and cache files? You're on a roll. Dedicated drives can handle those too. Or you could use a nifty tool called Log2RAM. Log2RAM. I've heard whispers of this. What's the deal? It stores your logs in RAM instead of on the SSD. Mm. RAM is super fast, doesn't wear out from writes. You know the drill. That's brilliant. But doesn't RAM lose data when you power off the machine? Good question. Log2RAM periodically syncs those logs to a disk, so you're covered even if the power goes out. Ah, uh, that makes sense. So to recap, we've got consumer SSDs, enterprise SSDs, and the strategic use of dedicated drives for a smoother running system. You got it. It's all about understanding your needs and picking the right storage to handle the workload. This is great stuff.
But choosing the right storage is just the first step, right? What else can we do to keep those drives healthy and spinning for years to come? You bet. There's a whole bag of tricks we can use to optimize our Proxmox setup. And that's what we'll be diving into next. All right, welcome back to our Proxmox deep dive. So far, we've looked at how Proxmox uses storage, the different types of drives, and even touched on a few basic optimization strategies. Right. Things like tweaking ZFS settings, using log to RAM, over-provisioning, all that good stuff. But I have a feeling there's a whole lot more we can do to squeeze extra life out of our Proxmox drives. Oh, absolutely. We've only just scratched the surface. Let's talk about some more advanced techniques. One that's particularly interesting is adjusting the ZFS sync interval. Sync interval. Sounds a bit techy. Yeah, it's a bit under the hood, but it's not that complicated once you wrap your head around it. Right. By default, ZFS writes data to the disk synchronously, meaning each write happens immediately. That sounds super reliable, but maybe a bit slow if it's constantly writing every little thing. Exactly. Synchronous writes are great for data integrity, but they can lead to a lot of disk activity, especially with lots of small frequent writes. Okay, I see the issue. So how do we fix this? That's where the sync interval comes in. By increasing it, we let ZFS buffer those write operations and commit them to the disk less often, but in bigger chunks. So instead of constantly writing to the disk, it kind of gathers things up and writes them all at once. Precisely. Now, there is a trade-off here. I bet there is. What's the catch? If you have a sudden power outage or the system crashes before that buffered data gets written to the disk, well, you could lose some data. Ah, so it's a balancing act between minimizing wear and ensuring data integrity. You got it. The best sync interval depends on your workload, how much risk you're comfortable with, and how reliable your hardware is. Got it. Something I'll need to play around with and see what works best for my setup. What else can we do? Another avenue to explore is alternative file systems designed specifically for SSDs, like F2FS. F2FS. Now that one's completely new to me. It stands for flash-friendly file system, which basically means it's built to take full advantage of how SSDs work. Right, unlike those older file systems like ext4, which were made for hard drives with skinning platters. Exactly. With hard drives, moving the read-write head around was the bottleneck. SSDs don't have that problem. So F2FS is all about making things super efficient for SSDs. You got it. It uses special techniques to minimize write amplification and make those SSDs last longer. Sounds impressive. But is F2FS ready for prime time? I mean, is it widely supported? It's been around for a bit, but it's still relatively new compared to the old guard. It's gaining traction, especially in enterprise environments. But you always want to do your research. Make sure it's compatible with your hardware and applications before making the switch. Right. Compatibility is key. Sounds like F2FS has a lot of potential, but thorough testing is a must. Absolutely. And hey, remember, technology is always moving forward. New file systems, new storage tech, it's all constantly evolving. It's important to stay in the loop. Agreed. Okay, so we've got adjusting the ZFS sync interval and checking out alternative file systems like F2FS. Anything else we should cover before we move on? One last thing. Maximizing disk longevity isn't a one-time fix. You know, it's an ongoing process. What do you mean? It's not about finding the perfect solution and then just forgetting about it. It's about understanding the factors at play, staying up to date with the latest tech and best practices, and adapting as you go. So it's like taking care of your health. You can't just eat one salad and expect to be healthy forever, yeah. right? It's about forming good habits. That's a great way to put it. And just like healthy habits lead to a longer, healthier life, the right approach to storage management will keep your Proxmox system humming along for years to come. But the specific approaches are going to be different depending on what you're doing with Proxmox. Right. Every setup is different. Exactly. That's why in the next part of our deep dive, we're going to look at some real world scenarios and see how to optimize for different situations. Love it. Time to put all this knowledge to work. And we're back for the final act of our Proxmox deep dive. Feels like we've covered a ton of ground. From the nitty gritty details of Proxmox storage to all those advanced optimization tricks. It's been quite a journey. And now for the fun part, putting all that knowledge into practice. Let's look at some real world examples and see how we can optimize Proxmox storage for different situations. I'm all about getting practical. Let's start with that classic home lab setup. You know, someone tinkering in their basement, spinning up VMs, having some fun. What would you recommend for them? For a home lab where things aren't super critical, I think we can prioritize affordability and ease of use. Absolutely. No need to go all out on enterprise-grade hardware when you're just messing around. Right. 
A good quality consumer SSD with a decent TBW rating, something like the Samsung 970 EVO Plus we talked about earlier, should be a great place to start. Sounds good. And how about the file system? Should we stick with ZFS or go with something simpler? I'd say stick with EXT4 or XFS for a home lab. They use fewer resources than ZFS, and they're perfectly capable of handling most home lab workloads. Got it. And what about those optimizations we discussed? Anything we should absolutely do, even in a home lab? Oh, for sure. Definitely set up Log2RAM to keep those log writes off your SSD. Simple tweak, but it can really help extend the life of your drive. Log2RAM check. Any other easy wins? Over-provisioning is another good one. Basically, just choose an SSD with more capacity than you think you need right now. It gives the drive more breathing room and helps with wear leveling and garbage collection. Over-provisioning check. So for a home lab, we're looking at a quality consumer SSD, EXT4 or XFS, Log2 RAM, and a bit of over-provisioning. Seems pretty straightforward. Exactly. It's a solid recipe for a stable, performant home lab setup that won't break the bank. Perfect. Now let's step things up a bit. Mm -hmm. Let's say we're talking about a small business using Proxmox for more critical operations, you know, where data loss could actually be a problem. Definitely. When we move into a business environment, reliability and data integrity become super important. For sure. Downtime for a business means lost money, unhappy customers, all that bad stuff. Exactly. So we need to up our game a bit in terms of storage choices. I'd recommend investing in enterprise-grade SSDs for this kind of setup. Something like the Intel DC series is a good option. Enterprise SSDs make sense. And should we be thinking about ZFS now for that extra data integrity? ZFS is a great choice for business environments. All those checksumming and self-healing features are really valuable when you need to protect critical data. Sounds like ZFS is the way to go. Any specific configuration recommendations for a small business? I'd suggest setting up a ZFS mirror. Basically, it creates a real-time copy of your data on a second drive. So if one drive fails, the other one just takes over? That's some serious peace of mind. It's like having a backup always running in the background, ready to step in if needed. Love it. And what about those ZFS optimization tricks we talked about, like adjusting the sync interval? You can certainly experiment with the sync interval to find the right balance, but in a business setting, you got to be careful. You need to really think about the potential risks if there's a power outage before that data buffer gets written. Right, the stakes are higher, so we need to be more cautious. Exactly. And monitoring is key. Set up some email alerts for those smart errors so you can catch potential drive issues before they turn into major headaches. Proactive monitoring check. So for a small business, we're talking enterprise SSDs, a ZFS mirror, maybe some careful tweaking of the sync interval, and definitely diligent monitoring. Sounds like a solid plan for a stable, high-performing Proxmox setup for a business. Awesome. Now let's talk about the big leagues. You know, large enterprise environments running mission-critical applications on Proxmox. What does their storage strategy look like? Now we're in the big leagues, for sure. At this level, we're pulling out all the stops to make sure our storage is rock solid, super fast, and lasts as long as possible. Time for the heavy artillery. We're talking top of the line enterprise SSDs, the ones with power loss protection and the highest endurance ratings you can find. No compromises here. Only the best for those mission critical systems. What about the file system and configuration? ZFS is still the champion here. I'd recommend a RAID setup for both data protection and performance. RAID Z2 or RAID Z3, depending on how much redundancy you need. RAID's got it. And how about other optimizations? Do we need a dedicated S-Log device at this level? Absolutely. A dedicated saw log, preferably another high endurance SSD, is a must have for caching those RAID operations and keeping the main storage drives happy. This log check. Anything else? Comprehensive monitoring is crucial in an enterprise environment. You want to know about any potential issues the instant they pop up? We're talking 204-7 vigilance. Monitoring double check. So for an enterprise setup, we're looking at top tier SSDs, ZFS RAID Z, a dedicated S-Log, and constant monitoring. That's a seriously robust setup. It is. It's all about creating a storage infrastructure that can handle anything you throw at it year after year. This has been an incredible deep dive. I feel like we've explored every nook and cranny of Proxmox storage and learned all the secrets to keeping those drives healthy. It's been a pleasure. Remember, knowledge is power. And with the right knowledge, you can build a Proxmox system that's both powerful and built to last. Absolutely. Any final words of wisdom for our listeners as they embark on their own Proxmox adventures? Don't be afraid to experiment. Every setup is different, so what works for one person might not be the best solution for another. Try different things, explore new technologies, and most importantly, have fun.
great advice, and remember the world of technology is always changing. Stay curious, keep learning, and your Proxmox skills will keep growing. Well said. And that wraps up our epic Proxmox deep dive. We've gone from the basics of storage to those ninja level optimization tricks. We've talked about real world setups for everything from home labs to enterprise environments. Now you've got the tools and the knowledge to build a Proxmox system that's both powerful and built to last. It's been a privilege joining you on this journey. To all our listeners out there, thanks for diving deep with us. We hope you've enjoyed exploring the world of Proxmox storage and learned a few things along the way. Until next time, may your drive spin smoothly and your data stay safe and sound.